when? Just over half a century ago, when we realized we had to save what we almost destroyed and let it thrive. Why? Because when humans come to a new place, the first thing we bring is battle. So, if we promise to leave it alone, maybe, maybe peace can really, truly exist somewhere on the planet Earth. Yeah, except for the camera, that's quite all right. <laughs> Just, I'm not here to photograph me, it's photographing me. There's a thing that says photograph me, that probably means put the camera on. Now you're learning. Now you're learning. Slowly. <laughs> Slowly. Flash, no flash. Me, oh, not me. Probably, yeah. This one, I thought of my friend from when I was little for this poem, when I was stuck at Rio Gaius Airport. <laughs> Called underwater and swimming. Did you say three days in the airport? No, hours in the night. No, we didn't stay the night there, no. No, Rio Gates, never mind. It's called underwater and swimming. Okay. Swimming with my best friend in a pool in the summertime, diving down to the deep end, flipping and springing up so high, could never compare to seeing Gen 2 penguins, stocky birds, actually swimming like porpoises underwater, then springing up so high from the water where we sat at the shoreline after watching the penguins dive in to the Southern Ocean's frigid salt water, group together, and then spring away. Like watching birds in flight, in formation, we'd watch six or eight of these birds all spring up in the water together, like just a porpoise together, in sync. I think of my friend now, how we swam near the Great Lakes, south of the North Pole, and now, at the other side of the world, I see it's a part of a beautiful hole. I know you can't see it well, but I've got a shot. It's in the flinging more and going back down. It was so cool to see these things going. It was amazing. I never thought I'd be able to pull off that. Do seeing that. Just go, follow each other. It, it, they're less worse. It's all going the same way. And I think off the lake. So yeah. Uh, this one is called On the Bridge. The captain invited us onto the bridge, and we cautiously walked and watched the majestic view from the front of the ship, searching for what was yet to be found. But lucky for us, crewmates saw it, the first humpback whales of the season. So the captain gently slowed the ship down just to try to glide alongside. And maybe the whales were as curious as we, because after a few minutes of gliding, three humpback whales came along beside trying to see what we might be hiding. Uh, our intentions were pure, but, but maybe they knew we'd never be truly alike. So they blew from their blowholes, curled with their fins, and with their tails, they turned the other way. Yes, it's true. We're not alike. They turned backwards while we moved ahead. But I think we both learned from each other, and we grew together in our final goodbye. I was honored to be on the bridge that day. I, I was honored they gave us that chance to commune with something so different from us that helps us, in a way, make us the same. Mm -hmm. I do have one longer one if you're willing to wait for the visiting pristine places. It was the final piece in the show. It's all about everything in the world, including this place. Pristine, visiting pristine places on the planet. When I was young, the world was the size of a thimble, and all I needed was in my own backyard. But on my own, I was a dot in the universe, and that had to change. So after trying to climb one of the Alps wearing socks and sandals, <laughs> I needed to go and rest at a nearby mountainside, spend 20 minutes in the radon filled cave just to try to gain my strength back again. After reading Hitler's concentration camp gates in Dachau, Arbeit macht frei, I walked through those gates and thought, work will set you free. Yes. It's true. I know it. Because your choice and your drive is freedom. 
After singing an entire acoustic concert at a bar at Fairbanks, Alaska, we took off after midnight, added extra layers, and we stood outside in the cold to bask in the geomagnetic dance of the Aurora Borealis. After being stared at by men in India because I was a tall Western woman, not dressed like a Muslim, well, I had to go into their iron-filled, human feces-filled Bay of Bengal just to get my feet wet. It's very iron-rich deposits there, and they their septic system is not like here. No. And when my husband went, I'm like, you gotta go get your feet wet. He's like, I don't want to do that. And I'm like, you gotta go do it, do it, do it, do it. And he's finally said, all right, I'll do it. And when I went there, I'm like, I told him to do it. I should do it. That was where that came from. Just like, speak, right? And and, what, and 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 of course, women are not. I, I'm so di diverted from this. We're not supposed to show our legs or our shoulders. So I had my pants rolled up so I can get in the water. And then a big water came, and then I got the bottom of my pants wet. But it just like loose like pants. And then I walk over and I start trying to dry off my feet with the towel that I brought with me. Yeah. And an Indian man whom I am positive didn't know a lick of English just sat there next to me and stared at me and smiled. Christy, you're on Christine. And I thought, I'm like, drying my feet. I would say something like that. Yeah. But he just was, this was too fascinating of a thing to watch. Yeah, yeah. I just decided to sit right down next to me. Entertainment for the locals. <laughs> yeah, I was entertainment for the locals. But now, let's get away from India Coast yeah. House. After stepping up the building over risers and palaces in China's forbidden city, an older Chinese man asked me in his where I was from. When I said Chicago, he joyously said, My kind of town. <laughs> After I sang at the Great Wall of China, a group of Chinese people asked me to take a picture with them. But I don't think it was my singing, but the fact that I was at least a foot taller than absolutely everyone there. After buying a balalika in St. Petersburg, I saw the alarming number of well-armed Russian guards at every street corner. And I thought, we may never be friends, but at times like this, I'll try to be friendly. After retracing Darwin's steps at the Galapagos Islands, I stopped near a crisscrossed overlapping sea lions napping so that I could contemplate natural selection. After seeing the destroyed British ships from early whaling in Antarctica, I photographed the first humpbacked whales of the season, then took a picture with a Gen 2 penguin as I sat in the snow and penguin approached me. Were they seven ships, the British one? The, there, were, there were a couple ships that they left there so that people could see and the, for the remnants and stuff, yeah. And the one day when I was photographing penguins, they were all going down toward the water, and I said, I'm going to have to take my camera and turn around yeah. and do a thing with this thing in the background. And then somebody over there was like, going, turn around. And I'm like, you idiot, I know, <laughs> this is why I'm here. <laughs> I had taken like 700 photos of <laughs> They're all over the place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm fully aware. <laughs> oh, and for the end of this poem, after this. Customers Audrey and Christy are offered already at the buy counter. Audrey and Christy. And more when a man in the third poorest country in the world was asked why the poor locals seemed so happy, he explained, We may not have it all, but we can choose to be happy. And so we do. And with these words, I proudly choose life. I choose life for the orcas and the humpback whales, the chinstrap and gen two penguins, the comorants, the gulls and terns. I choose life for the giant petrels, storm petrels, finches, nazca birds, even the sea lions and marine iguanas. I choose life for the Wyoming bison who pass me on the street. I choose life for the deer who approached us as we slept in the grass under stars. I choose life for all the mass farmed animals mankind slaughters because they choose to consume violence and not peace. I choose life because all around the world peace is the one thing so we could all always use. I'm done. I'm done. Antarctica bugs. Somebody just showed up.
Antarctica books. Laura, I just need to have a little... Laura Malta, Incredible <laughs> Poet Dealer, uh, Part of the Past and the Future. I'm Janet Parkers from Chicago, and I'm deeply, deeply part of the Austin Poetry Center.